What is going on, miners? Jump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. Today, I need to do some upgrading on my uh, EG4LL batteries in here, my server rack batteries for my uh, solar setup. And I need my laptop and a special cable and some instructions. And I'm kind of nervous that I'm gonna brick these things, but hopefully I don't. This is the cable right here. This is the EG4 RS232 uh, firmware updated cable. It should be like an ethernet style by a USB. And I need to upload some firmware from my laptop into these guys. So I guess what we need to do, first things first, is I need to shut everything down, unfortunately. As of right now, I'm pulling 1800 watts over here, mining with my Casper miners and some other mini box miners. I have the exhaust fan, just one single exhaust fan because it's actually been a lot cooler out lately running off of this guy and I'm gonna be disassembling this guy really soon. I just need to get the batteries upgraded, make sure I can do those properly, get these paralleled and then I'm gonna take that string and we're gonna throw it into this one. If you guys didn't see my last video wiring this up, go check it out, I got everything situated in this panel now 240 amp breakers one is off and obviously the other outputs off because i don't have any wires in oh and i actually added a 120 volt uh breaker right here which is a 20 amp breaker right for a normal 120 volt strip which i'm going to actually take these guys and wire these guys too and this is for the other 30 amp plug it's my other PDU that I actually purchased I showed that off in another video damn these batteries are at like 46% I actually been pulling a thousand watts throughout the entire night and I was actually just thinking I probably don't need to kill everything I just need to kill whichever battery I'm actually going to be upgrading here right so I think if I just shut the breaker off and I kill the BMS for right now. I can actually uh, put this to ID zero, which it actually requires you to do on each battery that you're gonna upgrade. So if I change the switches here to ID zero, kill this guy, and then just follow the instructions to get the rest of this done, I should be good to go. What I'll end up doing as well is if anybody has these EG4 batteries, I'll leave this entire uh, sheet right here so you guys can kind of reference it and go from there. And I'll also leave the uh, firmware that I am going to be upgrading to in today's video as well in a Google Doc down in the uh, description below after the fact. Okay, so I was talking to my rep and over here looking at these switches, right? It goes 1 to 64. ID 0 is actually 64, so all the switches need to go to the right, okay? Um, and then also in this uh, file that I'm going to leave in that Google Doc for you guys, this um, has two things, right? So the RS-485 is not the one you're following. Apparently, we're going to follow the RS-232 update uh, file, and that actually has this entire packet inside there. So it, uh, it does make a difference because the plug, this guy right here, where we need to plug it in, is actually into the battery communications port instead of the RS-485 port, which the... Um, Obviously, the RS-485 would make you plug into, as you can see, it says plug it into the battery comm port right there. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to kill this battery. Everything else is still on. I don't think it matters. I'm going to kill this right now. Everything is off here. I'm just going to take a picture of this guy, how I have the dip switches set for now, so I can put it back to that after I do this flash and then we'll be good. So let me uh, let me do that. Let me get this all hooked up to the computer and I'll show you guys that in a second. Also, don't forget to unplug any other communications from the battery because you don't want to brick it. If it's connected to any of these, you'll absolutely brick something. So let's, uh, yeah, let me hook this up and I'll be right back. All right, it says use the cable to connect to the battery COM port, which I did. As you guys can see, this black cable right here with the white tag, it's plugged in going up to my laptop okay now it says um, set the batteries dip switches to ID 0 which again is 64 in the book and that is all the way over to the right so we are ID 0 as of right now all the way to the right then it says we can turn on the uh, BMS and then we got to open up the firmware folder which is kind of strange right it says power pro Walmart fir firmware um, inside this I don't know what's gonna happen when I turn the BMS on I don't know if it will actually uh, open up a software for me I'm assuming it won't but if I go into this file here right you can see it says um, updater 
And then there's uh, right here, it says EG4LLRS232 updater. I'm assuming that's it because it says that's an application. So let's turn on the BMS and hope for the best. Again, this breaker is off. Do not turn that on. You will screw things up. So yeah, hopefully we don't soft brick this. If we do, I guess it's just reflashing the firmware and we should be okay to go. Um, let's open up this updater here. Gonna click yes. All right, Mint, now I need to find the specific folder inside here to put it into. Jesus, dude, I'm hitting the mouse pad through this freaking paper. Insane. All right, anyways, let's see. So it says, confirm that the COM port is set correctly for the RS-232 cable that Windows has assigned. Click import hex. So I need to find the hex file inside this uh, unzipped folder now. All right, so import hex. So if you guys don't know how to find the file, you can actually just go back to where you had it open and follow the steps here. So OS, then go to users, then contact, I assume, downloads, and then it's right there. And then there it is, the hex. That's exactly what we needed. The firmware hex file. As you can see, it's this type hex file. I know this sucks. Sorry, shaky hand holding the uh, camera and doing this. All right, perfect. It says loading hex file EG4. Okay, actually, I guess it's going to say loading until you hit open COM port. So we're gonna choose open COM port. Now you can see it says start update. I guess that is the next step. It says start update will now be available. Click start update. And I'm assuming I gotta wait to that to get to 100. Now you just leave it alone, let it do its thing and make sure your PC is plugged in if you're using a laptop so you don't brick your units oh wow it's actually going pretty quick it took about a minute to actually get off the ground and start but that was actually super quick that was like under a minute no joke um all right let's see so now start update did that now we can click close port it says once the update's complete uh update finish exit bootloader will be displayed in the prompt click close com port and then you can exit this application was that really it it was that easy what all right, let's see, I guess. All right, now I guess shut this off, put it back to ID6 and hope for the best. All right, I fixed the ID, it's back to number six. I got the battery communications port back here. Um, as you can see, ID6 is right there, so that's what I'm following. Um, now, I'm kind of nervous to turn this on because I have to update the rest of them. Now, the reason I'm actually updating this is because it would not register for lithium iron phosphate batteries up there because the three here I actually got were from a different batch and then these three were from a new batch. So the firmware is definitely not correct. So what I want to do now, again, turn this on. I want to make sure it does work and... I can see it charging and all that stuff. And then uh, we're just gonna move up the chain. I'm gonna do all of them and then you guys will see them all done. But let's, uh, I guess here goes nothing. Turn it on. And then once this is on, I'll turn the breaker on. Just wanna make sure this doesn't act funny. 52%. We don't have any weird blinking lights. Okay. Turn that on. Yeah, the run light's blinking, just like all the other ones. Man, that's crazy. Does it say, like, how do I know, how do I know what the firmware version is? No idea. I think that worked. Let me do that to the rest of them, and hopefully you guys will see this all done in just a second. So thankfully, my rep just got back to me. That worked perfectly fine. I turned it back on and checked, but you have to update the RS4851 also. He said tech support said to make sure you do both. So we got to follow the next file inside this thing. Again, remember I said there is uh, both here inside this uh, folder, the RS232 and the RS485. So it's just a little bit different, but pretty much the same stuff, right? Make sure you don't power down the BMS, all that. Uh, it says using the RS485, make sure you connect it to the RS485 port on the battery. So that's what we did right here. We got ID zero. And now I can turn this guy on. All right, and we actually disconnected all the other communication ports, so make sure that is uh, still disconnected, right? Now what you're going to do is go into the updater here. Well, what do you know? I got a call from tech support, and actually this battery, uh, sorry, the cable, rather, for the batteries, this RS-232 cable, is different than the RS-485 cable. So 
The battery COM port will work with this one. The RS-485 will not, so I do not have the actual cable I need to do to do the second part of the upgrade. So this is gonna be a part one of a part two video because I can't do anything, I'm kinda of dead in the water. And unfortunately, it just is what it is. But I got all of these actually updated from the uh, battery COM. Super easy, again, you just flip all the dip switches, killing this power, you end up disconnecting everything else, plug it into your computer, follow the instructions. Again, I'll leave leave this uh, file like I said all in a Google Doc in the description below if you guys are interested but man that sucks I really wish I didn't have to get another cable but at the same time it's really not a huge deal because it's just updating the batteries and they work perfectly fine they just don't communicate properly as they should like if you guys could see right here the communications on this one see the light blinking right there these ones are actually uh, not communicating at all so the blinking light is good here but it stops right here so again these three came in a separate batch from these three and that's where the whole uh issue arises they all need to be the same exact all the way down on both parts of the battery the bms and the uh, communication section so that is what it is unfortunately i cannot finish this today but for right now we are still uh you know registering at lead acid it's not a big deal i have it set for 600 amp hours because that's what we have throughout this entire battery server rack and uh yeah again it works fine charges fine it just doesn't communicate properly like it should so it'll read a little bit differently inside the uh, manual when i hook up my uh, app through the phone and all that stuff but anyways guys hopefully y'all have a good day hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully it helps some of you guys out i'll catch you guys on the next one peace out